You know what you need to do before this interview starts? He'd be like something dramatic, like coming up. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah I see like what you're saying. saying. It's just like, oh my God, this is going to be longer than 20 minutes. We're going to confuse so many people. Yeah, yeah, There's going to be so many questions after this what? video. Dude. Or it's like, will you marry me? <laughs> You start again though this is a little interesting for me because there's some things that i didn't want to reveal here all right so for our first question ants manitoba is one that i thought of and it goes like this why has your upload schedule been as slow as raising carpenter ants <laughs> um <laughs> what the heck <laughs> my upload schedule has been pretty pretty all over the place. And it's honestly just because of a bit of lack of motivation. Like I think it was six or seven months ago when I was uploading, but I decided to come back and stay strong and actually keep uploading. So I'm three uploads in and I'm still spacing them about a week to two weeks apart from each other. So it's actually working out and I put a lot more time into them and it's working good so far. Well, wow. no, that's actually pretty nice. You know, you getting like, back your motivation up now that we're in quarantine yeah and yeah how did the story go about meeting ants canada during one of his meet and greets so i actually met ants canada in winnipeg when he did one of his regular shows for his regular youtube channel and it went all right in the beginning um but when you signed up for tickets you actually have to apply for like or not apply but you have to like buy a separate thing that gets you the meet and greet and we forgot to do that so <clears throat> here i am standing in line watching the people in front of me asking for their meet and greet tickets and me not having one so then i uh i took the biggest brain move i could and i just looked at the guy straight in the face and i said don't worry i know him <laughs> i walked right past and they did not <laughs> question me at all oh my <clears throat> so i walk up um, I whip out my phone, I throw it across the room, it smacks the cement, I pick it up, we handshake, he signed my shirt, we took one picture, and then I was shuffled away because they were 30 minutes overdue, and I, my heart was like beating so fast. And then I got back to my hotel room, and I get a text from him saying, hey, if you're still around, we can talk in the lobby. And then I was really sad because I was already back in my hotel. Here we are with my 10 second encounter and that's literally all it was. And I wish it could have been more, but maybe one day in the future. Yep, one day. Maybe one day. Wink, wink, wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> Wait, when was this again? Like what year? <clears throat> oh God, two, three years ago. <laughs> oh, so like in 2017 or 2018. So for question number three, what has been keeping you busy? during quarantine? Well, mostly been work. I've been working like four to five days a week and it takes up most of my day. So I don't have a lot of free time, but I've kept most of my colonies alive, uh, especially the important ones. But I hope to update on those soon. Either than that, it's just been life. And I've put YouTube aside for quite a while, but through quarantine, I actually had a lot of time to research some things and figure out new ways about going videos and stuff like that. So it's been really good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same with TikTok. TikTok has kept me quite busy with content, although I kind of disappeared on all platforms for a little <laughs> while, but it's been good. It's been good overall. At least you've been like, you've had time to like come back during quarantine. Like I didn't even know you were like working like before. So <laughs> yeah, like I literally had no time at all to my name and it really sucked. Like, like I had to buy a car which was like four grand. And then I had to pay insurance every two months, which is 300. But then I had to like buy new rims, which was 800 and then tires. And then blah, blah, blah. Wow. The list wow. So the list it's continues. just been like life pretty much, right? Yeah. Didn't he have school or didn't you have school um, during when we were in quarantine? Like didn't you still have, cause like our school ended before yours did. And so but school during. when quarantine started, like the first um when spring break happened for me because that's like the week that we went home and we never came back was actually spring break so we didn't have school during spring break but we had it the weeks after that for just like a few more weeks and it wasn't anything major so mm. school was part of it and then work started to get heavy once summer actually hit in like like summer vacation which i actually wasn't supposed to be working as much because i was supposed to be going to a camp for a week which would have gave me 
more time off than I needed, which was like supposed to be the time that I could like figure stuff out. Cause you can't just like sit down and just make videos. Sometimes you just have to like, you gotta be like in the mindset and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't just say, well, you have four hours before work, just go film. And sometimes it's hard to just like, know what you want to do and like mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just like you can't really you need like time yeah which i didn't have a whole bunch of but it's gotten better now that's good that's good here we are question number four do you plan on eventually starting your own ant formicarium company yes i do i wouldn't say company i'd more just say like my own nest and brand i guess like uh -huh. based off youtube um they'll be mostly acrylic and they're still in the works. I still haven't even gotten my first prototype, but soon enough, they will be coming out. And I'm trying my hardest to collaborate with everybody I can to see what people want to be like in them and what they're going to be. Because I noticed that a lot of people like certain things more. Like a lot of people are interested in having like nests with chambers that you can unlock using like acrylic pieces so that you can just restrict the size of the nest that the ants are allowed to use. So that they're more comfortable and don't like litter in it, which mm -hmm. is something I definitely want to try and do. But as of now, I'm still in the stages of just prototyping. And when my first prototype comes available, which will probably just be a simple design, it will be available as a prototype design for lots of people that are interested so far off Instagram and YouTube. So like, could I ask how the progress is going? Like where you're at right now? So where I'm at right now is I'm currently waiting for my first designs to be cut. Everything's ready. The design's been transferred over to this other software. And now we're just waiting for this person to get back because they're actually, they were gone on vacation for two weeks, which I didn't know about until a few days ago. But when they get back, which should be soon, um, hopefully I'll get my first designs and I'll be posting pictures of the designs, prototypes, possibly on Instagram when that finally happens. All right. Because it's, right. been, it's been quite the wait. I'm going to be psyched for that. Because like, yo, this is big news, big news. Cause like, you know, Ant Scandi Scandinavia, he said he was like making his own shop too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's cool. Like mm -hmm. everyone's making their own nests and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is a much better way to like support people as well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So for the next question we have is what do you think the ant community is lacking? Like, like, do you think we're lacking some kind of like, um, like community or like stuff like that? Yes, I definitely think we're lacking a few things. Number one, we're lacking teamwork. All too often I see people just fighting over certain things in certain group chats. When in the long, when in the long term, things should stay more peaceful. I definitely think that we have a pretty solid community and a lot of people growing, but I see like a lot of the newbies sometimes just, um, people forget that there's still newbies that exist. And when they don't know certain things, they're treated more poorly, which I feel is not the greatest thing. I find a lot of the time that people who are more experienced, they're not really like, they don't like it when people don't- Oh, like everything. welcoming? Like if you're not like super experienced and you're like asking questions, it just kind of comes off as rude. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah, I know, yeah. I can see that happening a lot. I feel like there's a lack of, like, okay, this could be a good idea where we could bring up kind of like the Instagram thing. Like Instagram. the way we, the way we cross promote. Instagram. Oh yeah. Like on our stories. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like there's a lack of support to small creators, like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely can, like, a lack. We can, like, we could like make a group chat for YouTube grinders. So if you have a YouTube channel, you could like join it. And then if you're in it, you cross promote on your stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you That's mean. What we should know. we should make one a group chat where like we all like, right. we can, like cross promote yeah. everybody. I just feel like small creators just have this lack of support for everyone else. Like I feel like <clears throat> um we can all do our best to support everybody who's a smaller YouTuber that wants to try this, especially like on our stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. That way it would allow like um for everybody's audience to like Yeah. Especially for people that are actually like uploading like good content that um, is like underappreciated. So I've been like finding new people recently, and it's kind of weird. So I'm like trying to like find as many as I can and like see whose content's worthy. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of what I'm doing too. That's, like on my story, mm -hmm. like I'm watching mm -hmm. people, but I just don't like comment or anything. 
but like I'm still watching everybody that posts. And that's the good thing is that people should know. <clears throat> oh God, people should know that as a small YouTuber, it's really hard to like keep going. Mm-hmm. Even for even for where like even for just us, sometimes it feels like just like the lack of views and support and everything like that. Sometimes it's not huge in the beginning, and that's just because mm-hmm. this is a smaller niche. Especially when you see that, like, let's say one video does really really good. It's like it's one of those videos. It's one of those times where it's like, um, let me relax a little bit. Let me let me not upload. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And then that just carries on for a while, which I've seen happen to me before, um, where. I, I had one of my videos do well, and I was like, you know, it's fine. Let me not upload. And then you look at the analytics, and then everything's going back down. It's like, uh-oh, yeah, gotta, gotta, gotta get back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can relate that's with that I've, one. Yeah, that's what I've found for me, especially like trying to upload every once a week or once every two weeks. It's maybe not so much. You kind of have to like. You gotta upload and even if that video doesn't do good you just gotta upload another one and another one because like every video is a shot in the dark at mm-hmm. where it's gonna land and as long as you're as long as you're not decreasing more subs and you're gaining it's fine because if you lose one person then they're clearly not interested and that's fine because you want you don't want people subscribe to you that aren't gonna watch your content yeah mm. which is why bagging for <laughs> subs is kind of counterintuitive all right question number six um, will you study ants in the future? Like, whether it be a myrmecologist or just for, like, for fun? Maybe. I've done some research with Bradley, which is a species that is quite rare around here. And frankly, I actually don't think anyone else has really kept them before me because I've done a lot of searching online through forums and stuff like that. And I found nothing except for some of the people that have kept them that have actually bought them from me in the past when I had sold some of my stuff to uh, Canada Ant Colony. So <laughs> in reality, I probably have the biggest colony in captivity at the moment, which is kind of like a weird flex, but <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of neat to study them because they're very, very, very hyperactive and like they'll drown themselves in any open liquid and they're primarily ne- uh, sand nesters. So it's kind of neat to create a natural habitat. I actually have something on the way. I have a huge reptile tank that I'm going to turn into an ant vivarium. But Ooh. as of now, I am still waiting on a colony big enough to put in it. And I really want to put a Bradley colony into it because I think it would be really good to see because they're like so active and so crazy. And you'd be able to see like a lot of things they do. And they nest shallow, so they'll nest right up against any heat. So yeah, taking shots through glass will be really easy. Wait, have you tried like? Oh no, you can go. Uh, like maybe placing a smaller tank inside so that they can dig up closer to the glass. That might work because I know it worked for um, one guy. Oh, was, like I you was, was like like putting so they don't have as much space to dig. Yeah. Oh no! Well, it came with this huge like black heating mat. Oh okay. So I can put it up against the side of the glass, and then they'll nest like up against the glass. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. But they're 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 active enough that I won't even really need to be filming their nests. Like they're so so active above ground, it's crazy. Like they'll be so film or photogenic. I mean, like you know, sometimes when you shine lights on ants, they like run. They, mm-hmm. These guys just go like, oh, like let me at them, ah, and they like ready to fight and like. <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy, but I haven't really done a lot of filming with them yet, so I'm excited to do that. Have you like donated to like a uh, like any entomologists? Like any queens? Mm, I haven't, but I'm not exactly sure if they'd have any use because it's it's just a formica species. But at the same time, it's like a lot different. So there's something that happened I tried in the past that it worked and I still don't know how. But I had a really small colony and a colony that was like three queens. Mm-hmm. And I actually tried to conjoin the two before winter. And it actually worked. Also, like, which is like they combine really, really weird because the colonies joined, but that's like signs of a super colony because normally formica colonies wouldn't conjoin after like being established. So it was really weird to see this behavior coming from a formica species. And I'm definitely going to try this again in the future and see if I can get it on camera this time. But I still don't really know. 
an explanation to why they accepted the colony. But mm. yeah, it was more to just see how the workers reacted because of how fast they are. And then all of a sudden the workers just decided that they were just going to all move into one nest. Dang, that's pretty cool though. And it blew me away because it was not what I was expecting to happen. Yeah. So let's let's go on to the next question, which is, do you have any other pets? I do. I have a cat who's 14 years old and a dog that's only four. My cat's in a calico and my dog is a white lab. For question number eight, where do you get your inspiration from? Like for making videos and stuff like that? Well, over the last few months, um, I've done a lot of research on like what videos are currently available for everybody to watch. And I've noticed that there's been like a lack of a lot of beginner videos. So I've been trying to step back and just try and make some more revamped and better thought out and produced tutorials because a lot of people are joining the hobby are new and sometimes they need a good refresher as well as some updated knowledge. So I find that producing content that is aimed at beginners is really good and it helps them out a lot when starting out. So it's like I'm recording, like, and then, no, 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 no. Yeah, I know, dude. It sounds like you're reading off a script. Like, why do I do that? Why do I? I, I, I don't know why it's so hard for me to like read off a script and sound normal. I swear. Okay. Just make sure that just like you can have like an, a transition. It's like. So for Instagram questions, the first one we have is from Leo and Ten. Yo, shout out to you, bro, because you're in my Discord. I remember you. Okay. <laughs> His question was, what is your opinion on Ant Canada products? I think that Ant Canada products are actually pretty good, as I have a few myself, even though they're kind of old. The only issue that I see that comes with buying Ant Canada products has to be their shipping, as it's honestly very, very expensive. Even for something really cheap, it ends up being at least 60 bucks Canadian or more, which is very expensive. For the designs overall, I think that like they've definitely improved the designs and the material a lot better. Um, I don't think the nests are as deep as they used to be, and they're a lot more like brighter colored, so you can see the ants better. Because the old ones used to be really dark. Oh, really? Yeah, like the old ones are like like a really dark brown, and the, you can't if like room light is on, you can't see inside the nest. Like it's really dark. But overall, their products are pretty good. If I could change one thing, it would just be the way they ship them as it's, yeah, it's definitely what takes money out of the pocket. That's for sure. So for the next question by Blitz Ants, also shout out to you because you're in my Discord. Uh, why did you get into ant keeping is what he asked. Well, I think this is the case for a lot of people, but I've always had an interest for insects as a kid. And what really sparked ant keeping was watching one of Ants Canada's videos, which was called My Fire Ants Are Trying to Escape, which just happens to be his most viewed video. I think it has 50 million views on it. And after seeing that, I binge watched Ants Canada for about a full week before frantically trying to catch a queen in the middle of September, which was almost impossible. I somehow found a deal late and she died. And then I spent the whole winter binge watching and then I finally started my ant keeping journey in 2016 the summer of 2016 and the next year after that is actually when this youtube channel was created and oh wait no not this youtube channel i should be saying my youtube channel but yeah that's when my channel was created and that's when i started and then i continued to go from uploading one video a week to not uploading for five months to uploading <laughs> one a week and then not for five months and here we are uploading every two weeks so let's not have that five month break this time and you guys have fully permission to just kick me in the butt so that i keep uploading so that's where we're at the next question is from aunt jazz joe how do you say his name Andrew? oh uh i think it's aunt jazz jazz <laughs> yes. and the next question was asked by four people um aunt jazz jazz aunt knowledge venomous beast 15 and aunt Surf Coast. The question goes like this. How many ant colonies do you currently have and how many did you have in the past? This is a really hard question because I've had a lot and I've also traded with some close people. Um, but if I think about this really hard, um, I have 47. <laughs> <laughs> 47 current colonies. I have, so <laughs> at the moment, I have about 47 colonies. Um, the majority of them being in test tubes, but about 10 of them 
or so being in formicarians. So one, I haven't gone over this colony yet, but I have this big Bradley colony that like is in a medium size in Australia. Mm -hmm. I have a mini Fadoli colony that's in like a little test tube outworld setup thing. Um, I have this new colony of uh, Leptothorax that I'm currently moving. I have a Tetramorium colony that I haven't done an update on in nine months, but it is getting big. Um, a Tapanoma colony, a Myrmica colony. Okay. I have a, a Phenogaster, a Lacius, a Ca these are all just single queens, a Caponatus, another Formica, another Formica, a Caponatus, uh, unfortunately a dyed Solenopsis molesta queen, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a Messer queen, uh, a Bradley queen, another Bradley queen, uh, Parasitic Formica Queen, Parasitic Formica, Chromatic Aster dead, unfortunately. Um, another Tetramorin that's small. Another Formica, 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 Formica. Holy moly. Holy uh, ants. And uh, another Mermica Colony. A, a two Queen Solenopsis Molesta founding colony. Um, a Temnothorax Queen. A Temnothorax Colony. And... That's just the test tube stuff and like some of the formicarian stuff. I have the Caponatus colony that has like four queens. I have another Bradley colony. I have another Tapanoma colony. I have another Formica colony. I have a Messer colony on the ground as well as another Formica colony. And then on the table here that I still haven't moved, I have another Leptothorax. Um, oh, yes. And I don't know where she went, but I have a. Oh my god, she's not in this open test tube. What the heck? She better not be. An escape queen. Maybe not though. Hold on. Gotta make sure nothing in here. I think I moved her and I just forgot. Dude, like most of my colonies are just in test tubes too. Same here because I can't afford a lot of <laughs> former care here. And also because my colonies just like grow slow and I don't feed them a lot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> It's a, uh, well, what was it before it? It's a, what's it called? A Dolicodurus. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've heard of, I've heard of those before. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Just hold on, I'm just quickly searching. Wait, let this. me, let me search it up. Cause I don't I, remember if I know what it looks like. Are they semi-claustral or fully? Semi? Oh no. <laughs> I, where did I put her? I'm actually like really worried. Oh, I found her! Oh, you did? Oh my god. Okay. Where is she? Is she, like, running on the ground? No, no, I have her in a test tube setup, but it was, like, falling behind somewhere. Oh, dang. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, but, um, Tetramorium, like, if I were to recommend a species about anyone, like, honestly, Tetramorium are so easy to keep, and they grow so fast. You literally just keep feeding them, and just keep feeding them, and they don't even care. So, the next question we have for you, is from Chapman Shrevin and Liam Nidus 21 who asked, what is your go-to source of sugars and main source of protein you give your ants? I've kind of experimented with a few things, but my top thing for protein is definitely mealworms. Although I find that only certain colonies will accept um, crickets. The reason being is probably because they're just a smaller species and it's easier for them to kind of like uh, take every piece of the cricket rather than just the whole mealworm around. And if you've ever had mealworms, you'd know that squishing them usually causes a not a great mess. So a lot of the times they stick to the ground and they can't actually move them anymore, which makes them a little uncomfortable. And if they don't feel super safe in the space they're at, they sometimes don't eat all the mealworm because they can't bring it right back into the nest. But with crickets, it's really easy and they can break them down in the nest. So Crickets or mealworms, the only downside of crickets is that um, they do kind of stink, and especially if they die, you got to take them out because they don't smell very good. Um, but the good thing with mealworms is that a lot of the times you can get them really cheap. You can get like 50 mealworms for $2, um, oh, wow. where I live okay. anyway. It's really good. And almost always, um, if you don't have an insanely... Um, uh, what was I gonna say? What the heck? <laughs> if you're if you're not feeding a whole bunch of those mealworms to your colonies like immediately, the beetles will often mate and just lay a new batch of eggs and worms. Oh, 
and workers. <laughs> They'll hatch out new wor <laughs> workers. <laughs> workers. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> They'll create a new generation of worms, and a lot of the times they're so tiny you can't see them. So all of a sudden, you'll just get a brand new generation that will start to grow, and now you have another brand new set of mealworms. But the one thing that's most important to remember with all feeders is that you actually have to feed your feeders because your ants are eating what's inside the feeders. So the only way you can make sure that the ants are getting the right protein is to be feeding your feeders good enough to make sure that they are just as healthy. So for mealworms, um, I just give them apples and stuff like that, and I just keep them in oats. And it's really, really easy to keep mealworms. And for sugars, I go with two main sources. Um, I actually live pretty close to a honey farmer, so I get honey from them raw, and my ants love that. But sometimes for test tubes, or sorry, but sometimes for bigger colonies that need lots of it. But for a lot of the big colonies, I tend to go with just sugar water towers because that way it's a more long-term solution, and I can just take them out and put new stuff in, and I don't have to worry about like the honey drying up or anything like that because I'm using sugar water. So yeah. Sugar water, mealworms, honey, and crickets. It's my go-to thing. Wow. You know, I haven't even fed my ants like mealworms yet. Like I had a mealworm farm, but then I was gone for like a week and then they all died. There was like a huge, huge mold patch and it was, it was, it was nasty. Mm. So yeah. That always happens to me with moisture. The second that any too, too yeah. much moisture gets in, it just, everything goes bad. Can you just feed them outside stuff, right? Yeah, I just feed them like moths and like leaf hoppers that i get from my okay. black light definitely try like mealworms you can literally freeze them in the freezer mm -hmm. and then just take one out and cut it in half and like split up a bunch of whole bunch of like different colonies they're 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 like probably some of like the best feeders for ants out there because you can just crickets are are like <laughs> mealworms are a lot easier to clean up mm -hmm. but they love crickets so much more than mealworms. And I find that, like, with harvester ants, there's, like, a really good formula out there somewhere. I, I, I still don't know what it is, but it's, like, this where you, like, grind up this, like, it's kind of just, like, it's, like, ant bread. Mm -hmm. And it just has all these nutritions that they need. But, yeah, it's, I definitely give crickets or mealworms a try. It's worth it. They love them. Yeah. I heard crickets or like on the moisture gradient scale, mealworm, mealworms and superworms or Mario worms, as some people know them, uh, they carry less moisture than most other feeder insects. Um, roaches, sadly, you can't have them up in Canada, but roaches tend to have a lot of moisture or dubia roaches at least. Um, and then crickets also tend to have a lot of moisture, um, being like water inside the animal, which is also good for the ants. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, actually. Yeah, I just, like, before I fed, like, red runners, I fed, like, red runner uh, cockroaches to my ass. You could, uh, you guys know what gut loading is, right? Yeah. Make food okay, a bunch. Yeah. yeah, you just throw, yeah, give, give them a lot of food, and then when you, like, with crickets, you can see, like, inside them, kind of. Um, like, feeder crickets, at least, like, the little gray crickets, you can kind of see inside. Like, yeah, no, they, I know what you mean. They're, like, they're kind of see-through. Yeah. Um, and so, like, once you see that, you just either pre kill the cricket or you just throw it in there. It's good to go. And the ants get water and protein from it. Sick. But on to the next question, which actually has been asked by another set of four people, um, going by the names of 04 Juiced, Ant Keeper 14, Ant Nation YT, and Ant underscore 459. And that is, what species of ant is your favorite, native or exotic? <laughs> this is a, I don't like this question because, like, <laughs> I want to keep Rita Panera. I want to keep, like, Trab Jaws. I want to keep Dino Mermex. Like, hmm, I don't really know. I also don't want to simp for Ada, but, like, Ada are really cool. Oh, yeah. You know what? Okay. I don't remember what this is called, but I, I'm going to, hold on. Interestingly enough, and Keeper 14 is the friend that supplies me with like a lot of the stuff I have, but just hang on. I'm going to quickly ask him because there's a species 
That is so cool. Their main diet is spider eggs. They're, they only eat spider, spider eggs. eggs. They're super hard to keep in captivity because of that. Spider eggs? What? They spider only eggs. eat spider eggs, yeah. I've never heard of an ant that does that. Unless I've like, heard of the name. Do they? Do their colonies grow big or stay small? I don't know. I'm just going to quickly ask him for the name. I never even really knew that. And how did they how find did, like, the spiders? Like, work? well, that's what I. That's what I've had a few questions about. Like, um, how did they figure that out? Okay, he's already responding, so I'll just quickly. I think there's like a format. Oh my god, what a name! <laughs> what I'm is it? Put this, I'm just gonna. I don't even know how to say this. Okay, let me try. Prociterum cecilium. They're like little, they're weird. They look like really bulky and stuff. Here, I'll send it to the chat right now. Oh, oh, shoot. I yeah, think we, chat. hold up. Let me see if we have those in there. Oh, is it only that species that um, eats spider eggs or is it that whole genus? I, I think it's just these guys. I'm not exactly sure. Hold on. I'm going to do a quick, um, if I go to ant maps. Yeah, we have 72 species in Manitoba of just, like, ants in general, and Australia has a thousand, like... But... A thousand? Yeah, okay, it's, yeah. Like, not even, it's not even been. fair. So, like, they're not, like, super rare around... Oh, they're not native? Oh, yeah, I forgot. They're, like, at the tip of Ontario and stuff. Yeah, there's another species that looks like it, or at least the abdomen curve part. Colonies of this species can be found in fields feeding on arthropod eggs, and captive colonies have been maintained for weeks almost exclusively on spider eggs. Eggs are found stored in chambers of the nest in the field, and egg storing behavior also occurs in the lab when supplied with spider eggs. Captive colonies ignore other prey, including insect remains and the eggs, larvae, and pupae of other ants. When the species that we're talking about is provided with spider eggs in the lab, their reflexed gaster tip is used to tuck the slippery eggs forward when the mandibles, when the, oh, sorry, forward. Oh, this is not worded very good. <laughs> to tuck the slippery eggs forward toward the mandibles of the egg are being carried by the ants. Like they, yeah, they, so like they, sh they use it to like get it into their mandibles because I guess they're too stupid to do it normally. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to go with the one I was talking about before. The, um, the Prasio Salat. Oh my God. Oh. Let, me, let me just go Google Translate real quick and go, um, Formica, I'm not even typing in the thing. Formica, Bradley. Okay. And then we listen to it. Formica, Bradley, I. Bradley, I. She really said she. <laughs> Bradley, she really. I. Formica, Bradley, I. Okay, let's try the other one. <laughs> oh no, okay, why is it in so Latin? It detected Latin. I mean, it is in Latin. Oh, well, they are what? Yeah, they are Latin. They're Latin names. Oh my god, what the f What? Proceridium <laughs> Siliaceum. Proceridium Siliaceum. Definitely is my favorite exotic species that I've seen so far because they actually eat spider eggs and the eggs of aphids. Um, it's only been really recorded in captivity and it's a really cool species that I want to try and keep one day, but I feel like it would be really hard and probably unsuccessful. But they're a really cool species and I definitely think that they're very unique. Hmm. Good answer. Good answer. Next question. Ants Otkin said, do you keep ant sleeve making or parasitic ants? I have kept some parasitic formica in the past. Um, currently at the moment, I don't have any that are alive, but I definitely want to try and keep some next year. Flame making, I don't think I have any either. No, I don't think so. But they're definitely a really cool species to document. So next summer, I hopefully will be able to. Yeah, definitely. They seem like a pretty cool, pretty cool species or pretty cool type of ant. And for our next question, Neapolitan is good. asks, what are some native ants in your area that you often see? Well, since Canada is so fortunate to have absolutely nothing, um, I see a lot of Laceus, a lot of Formica, a lot of Campanatus, 
and a lot of Myrmica. And that's all you'll see unless you actually know how to search. So for any random person wandering around, you'd basically only find those species. But if you know how to look a little deeper, you can find Leptothorax and some other species that are like... Oh, I blanked. Hold on. What else is in my area? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, we got a pause. We got. We can work with the pause. Tapanoma, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Hold on, okay. Tapanoma, we got another one. Um, okay, well, no, that's... Yeah, that's about everything. Just Leptothorax is really the only thing you have to search for here. And Tapanoma as well. That's another species that I see. But not... You have to look really hard to see them. All right, so, yeah. all right. Yeah, we don't have a we don't have a whole bunch here in Canada, honestly. I wish we had a lot more to do with because like we don't really have anything super cool around where I live anyway. Well, the good thing is is that Canada's restrictions on shipping inside Canada. Mm -hmm. There you're allowed to ship any species of ant around Canada. So like a lot of different provinces have some different type of species. Um that are more rare and maybe more common over there. So I've gotten hooked up with a few of those before. So that, that's been nice, but just around where I live, um, yeah, there's like next to nothing. I guess that, that wraps up the main questions about ants then. And all we have left is the unrelated ones. If you're ready for those questions, ants and it's over. Okay. So the first question was from ant keeper Seb. And he said, what is your favorite movie? And do you like bananas? Um, bananas are pretty cool. Yeah. They also glow in the dark under a black light as well. So that's um, that's actually pretty cool. But now you're going to try that, I don't. <laughs> For my favorite movie, I'd have to say Interstellar. And if you've never seen that, then you have not seen a movie before. Anything by Christopher Nolan is seriously some of the best stuff I've ever seen before. Um, really love it. And it'll that probably always be my favorite movie. Yeah, Interstellar for sure. Oh, well. I've never... Uh, it's, I don't know if I should say anything about that, but okay. No, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna say something about it. No, nothing on my end. No comments. No, 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 no. Light scammer ants. No, 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 it's no. your turn. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, from Ants Octon, what is your name and where are you from? Um, I'm pretty sure if you dig deep enough, you can find that my name has been scattered around in certain places, but my name is Tough. And I live in Manitoba, Canada. Nothing here but <laughs> flat land and fields. Well, that's tough. That was uh, uh, <laughs> oh my god, original joke. <laughs> original joke here. And in relation to that is, What do you think of America by Lucas Skates? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right well um okay i think uh ant wise there's a lot of really neat species there but unfortunately the things that you're allowed to ship around in australia uh, <laughs> in america are great the things you're allowed to ship around in america are pretty limited ant wise um with um pug and rmx being one of the only ones that you can and if you haven't seen Andrew's video you should probably go look yeah, at that almost a year old um, i know right celebrate a little birth of a baby video hitting one year <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um other than ant wise um so yeah that's all i have to say actually i don't really know what to say about that it's like goose would be i can't even say his name yeah i don't think he would be able to say his name either or her name i don't i don't know but oh, well, but uh, <clears throat> <laughs> i feel like i know this question will be very uh, thought provoking. Thought so, provoke. okay, okay. <clears throat> is seen cat asks, how does he poop? So, <laughs> just exposing people. Mo most people don't know this, but I actually, I just don't. Um, that's yeah, I just don't like ever. I just eat a lot of cheese. Oh wow. <laughs> I yeah. like cheese. One day though, pff, it'll just it'll all all just flood maybe, out. Maybe, but like it might not. So it's it's built inside your stomach. It's well, like it's piled piling up. 
What if it just gets transported onto my the most hated person that I hate? It just gets put on their house. It, yeah. it falls from the sky. Yeah, it just straight and lands on the roof. Oh wow. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm not on that list. What what the hell is this answer? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. For the next question, from Binix Ants. <laughs> Do you have Ligma? And ask him out on a date. <laughs> ask Ligma out on a date? I don't, I don't, ask, I think it was towards Ender, right? Yeah. Lights, do, do you know what Ligma is? Oh, man. Yeah, oh, hold man. it, let me search it right now. Oh, <laughs> my. Okay. <laughs> Could you not? The definition of Ligma. <laughs> about to be the death. Hey, wait. Let me ask do you know what? Do you know what it is? You have to look it up. So do you know what it is? Uh, wait, it's gonna be like five seconds. <laughs> do what you will with that clip. <laughs> but the next Ender. question is: Ant Nation YT asks, Minecraft video, and he's asked this um, countless times. He has. Um, well, all I can say this is: Minecraft video, Roblox video, it'll happen eventually. Eventually. Keep asking, bro. Keep asking. Keep asking. It will happen. Every time I upload, you DM me. I promise you, eventually you will get what you want. Army of insects. Are Manitoba and Ants Manitoba the same? <laughs> no. Um, absolutely not. <laughs> God, how do I go about this? <laughs> no, it's actually um, not the very first time we've ever been mistaken, but... Hopefully it'll be the last. Um, we are not the same person, and uh, it's actually because we have different usernames as well um, and different profile pictures and um, different genes. We're not the same person, but um, I'm sure that if you went and DM'd him, he'd tell you some very interesting stories. Tropical ants, uh, hope worlds, and ant exploration asks, does he... Have a crush? Is he single? If he had to choose between ants and a girlfriend, who would you choose? I mean... <laughs> I wanted to say like, Tem knows before hoes or something. <laughs> I couldn't think of something. Um. I definitely choose ants. I know they always got my back. Um, I can feed them whenever they want, and they don't complain on where we go or what I feed them. Um, I decide if they die, so it's really up to me. Unless sometimes they just take their own path and decide that they don't want to be alive anymore because probably just because something natural, not because of the care. Um, I definitely think that ants are much more reliable because I can look at them whenever I want, however I want, constantly, 24-7 and have them under uh, full surveillance, um, and they can't do anything about it. So I can watch them as, as much as I want. I can also, uh, this, is, this is not recommended, but like um, you can forcefully move them and put them into whatever you want and watch them. And if they die, you can blame it on some other thing. But it's unrelated. So yeah, I definitely choose ants. Um, do I have a crush? Um, Definitely on Ender Ants. Um, I think this has been pretty clear for a while now. Um, you know, me and him, we, we have a long we have a long history before all this YouTube stuff happened, you know. But we've just tried to put it all be all behind us. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Your emotions it's, are coming it's, back. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Why did they have to ask? I they had to ask about this. They just oh, six months, six months. Thomas Barley asks the final question: okay. Will you marry me? Oh my God! I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Oh my gosh! Except. Oh. Oh, and that concludes I the Ants Manitoba no. interview. No, no, no! I won't marry him. If you made it this far. It means that you've successfully watched almost 90% of this video and have access to our special Discord server with a special link in the description as a reward for making it all the way to the end of the interview. 
I hope you enjoyed this interview, Ants Manitoba. Thank you for tuning in into Let's Talk Ants with me and Lights, Camera, Ants. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope it doesn't scare away any future interviewees. <laughs> interviewees, a word? Okay, yeah, it's good. It works. It works. That's the right word. I did it. Okay. And don't forget to check out all of our channels in the description below. Okay. As slow okay. as Raven Carpenter ads. He really. <laughs> yeah. Three. Yeah, that was like the first question. That was like the first question I ever thought of. I hate to say that. I hate to make you cut this part out as well, but like you can cut that at me laughing for like a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, just, they're literally right behind me. Oh, wow. The echo. Oh, the show. ambience. On a, on a big show, show. The reverb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. You can just cut this back in then, just randomly, like a blooper boop or whatever. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that was crack. crack. <laughs> <laughs> you not hear that. <laughs> Question number eight. Where do you get your inspiration from? Like, like what motivates you to make videos? <laughs> and <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's five o'clock. Why do you have supper ready? We do not eat this early. God. Okay. Go ahead. We're good now. It's but you just had to look loose international gene. My and what the what is that word? Ancestors. Okay, so and beforehand you didn't know what it meant, right? No. Okay, ligma balls. Oh. <laughs> I don't think anybody else will tune in after these last clips. So. Syria. <laughs> pro seratium. Pro seratium. Pro seratium. Salacium. Pro seratium. Salacium. Pro Pros, what? <laughs> Grammar class with Pro Ants Manitoba. <laughs> yeah. Pro Prosiratium. Yeah, definitely that. Pro. Prosiratium. Pro. 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 I. C E R A T I U M. Pro Okay, hold on. I gotta, I gotta see this thing again. Pro Seridium Siliacium. Next question by Ants Otkin. <laughs> Are you gonna redo that question or not? Oh, no, I'm still gonna keep it. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, God, it was, you were so close to the mic. Oh, was I? Oh my gosh, I thought that, I thought you knew. You were oh like, no, I didn't know. Our next question. <laughs> it was so loud. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I thought you, you did it on purpose. Oh. <laughs> this isn't even an ant name, because I don't think. You're the fool now. Neopol- Yo. Quarantine did me bad. I can't- <laughs> Neopolitan? I can't pronounce <laughs> yeah. words. I think it's, it's Neopolitan. Neopolitan. <laughs> gotcha, I can't even see it, I knew it. Why has your upload schedule? been as slow as raising carpenter ants <laughs> um <laughs> god that's actually really good <laughs> what <laughs> what the heck <laughs> you really had to do me like that the first question <laughs> okay anyway. as slow okay. as raising carpenter ants you really <laughs> yeah and yeah I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what the heck is that? Okay. All of a sudden, nowhere, Andrew just like... <laughs> oh, we just I ended see. off with me proposing, like... <laughs>